Hey, hey, hey. Energy focus for the week. So much to talk about. So many cosmic forces going on out there. Come on in and join me. Come on in and join me tonight. As we focus our energy, talk about what's going on. Lots and lots and lots of energy out in the cosmos. Really pushing on all of us. Come on in and join me. I'm over here on Instagram as well as Facebook. Share it out. Let me know you're here. Give me a thumbs up. I'm going to check and see if it's over here streaming in the Empowered Spirit Circle. Come join me on my Facebook group. Let's see. Seeing it here. Making sure it's on. All right. Seeing people to come in. Hey there. Give me a thumbs up. So much energy going on. Oh, my gosh. So much to talk about. Let me see if it's streaming. All right. I think we're streaming everywhere. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Share it out as well for me. All right. Here we are. Another Sunday night. Just keeps going and going and going. So welcome. Welcome, everyone. Terry Ann Hyman here. This is my live video uh, stream for my Empowered Spirit Show. This is where we come on, we talk about the cosmos, we look at some cards, and we align our energy energetically together for the week. So much going on this week. So much going on this month, especially as you move to the end in the cosmos. So I'm trying to narrow it down so we don't get too overwhelmed. I know for myself, there's just a lot of shaking up of energy. I know there's a lot of things going on really pushing me. I know today I had a moment where I'm like, why do I have such a big emotional body? Why do I feel everything? Why do I go to the extremes? One minute I'm feeling great and then a little tumble and oh my gosh, I'm feeling really at the other extreme. And that's really what full moons can do and all of the energy shifting around. So maybe you've been feeling that too. I know I posted a little bit earlier in the month about earlier in the week and the Empowered Spirit Circle about you know, this right, this energy that's building in this full moon, it's like this restless edge. Like you're sitting there and you're like wondering, like, what is it? What is it? What is it? And that's some of the underlying forces that is going on as well. We're just starting to really open up. We had a lot of shifts going on right as we started December, which is really shifting a lot around. We're moving out of signs where the planets are moving around. This is big stuff. This is stuff that hasn't happened in many years. And when that does, it just shifts everything. And as we move through this week, we are coming into the last full moon of the year, all right? And it's also happening on this huge portal of energy. It happens depending on where you are, but for the most part, it's 12-12. All right, it comes in very early in the morning on 12-12. I think here in the south, it's actually on the 11th, but we do have that two and a half day period. So really, a lot of people are talking about the combination of the energy of the full moon and the 12-12 portal of energy as well. So let's just break that down a little bit because it's big, it's huge, but it does offer us all the opportunity to go deeper within, to ask those big questions. And maybe they're not easy to ask, all right? And I know for myself, it's just hard sometimes to look at those bigger questions and it's hard to move through the energy, but we have to do it. We have to look at the issues, talk about what's going on and open up to the vibration and lift it up. That's what we do. All right, now the key is to, to sustain that energy. And I think that's going to be my word for 2020. Sustain that vibration. See if I can find the word to mean that. But that's what I need to do is to learn how to really sustain it and keep it going. All right, so as we start the beginning of the week, we're already sitting in Taurus, which is good because we can ground tonight, ground tomorrow, open up the energy field, and just really start to release and let go, pull the body in a little bit because... The emotional body builds on its own with that full moon. Now, we're in the sun sign of Sag, which is that explorer energy, that gypsy energy, that knowledge seeker energy. But the moon is going to be in, in Gemini. So Gemini is the energy of, like, communications. All right? It's a little bit, it's a little bit analytical, right? It's going to be, like, asking questions, searching for knowledge. So we have a little bit of that opposing forces. That's what full moons are. All right? So then we try to put this energy together. So it's asking us to look not only at the bigger picture, which is great because we're at the end of the year, but also at the details, all right? So we've got that Gemini energy, which is kind of that left brain, details, logical, with the Sagittarius energy, which is expansion, right brain energy. So asking us to look at both. So as we move through this full moon, the last one of the season, coming at this portal of energy, 
we are being challenged. We're being challenged with the bigger questions of our life, of our spirit, and of our soul. All right, we're being challenged to understand more and more of what it is we are doing. All right, we all are going through this. We're going to see big shifts coming up. 2020, oh my God, there's already so much to talk about as well, about the conjunction of planets, so many planets mixing and going together and just shifted everything, which is what's going to happen. We are going to start to see some shifts. So what can you do to join in this vibration? What can you do to lift your vibration and really start to bring forward the changes we all desire? We're going to see it. It's going to happen. So we're starting into that energy now. As we move through this week, the full moon on Wednesday is going to open up into the portal 1212. Let's talk about that. So 1212 is a really high portal of energy. They talk about it being the codes that open up the Merkaba. What's the Merkaba? The Merkaba is what feeds our light body. All right, that's that body of light, that energy, that subtle body that resides in you. Maybe you can't see it. Maybe it won't show up on an x-ray, but it's there. So when we can align our spiritual cord, when we can align our vibration of energy with the Merkaba, we continually feed it. So as we open up to that 12-12 and the full moon, look how much light is there for us. So we have to take the time, slow down, magnify this energy, open up that light body, really begin to feed it so that radiance can grow from the inside out. That's what we all need. That's how we begin to raise the vibration and that's how you too can begin to learn to hold that vibration. Again, that's going to be my key for 2020. Hold that vibration, lift it up. So the Merkaba energy on 1212 comes in. As you move through the energy, it's like take some extra time. Take some time for meditation. Take some time to just feel that light body radiating from the inside out. And imagine the Mer Merkaba. The Merkaba looks like two triangles, one upside down to each other, almost like a Jewish star, but it's three-dimensional. And it just kind of sits up there, and this portal of energy starts to open and starts to feed the light body. So if you practice an energy modality, especially like a Reiki, or if you work in the Akashic Records like I do, or you work in the higher vibrations, this is a great time to really strengthen those connections. So you know the practice. You go in, you open up, you vibrate with this energy, and you begin to live those changes that you want to see. So the first thing we have to do as we move to the beginning of the week is recognize what is it we can reflect on, what can we let go of. The higher vibrations, again, of Sagittarius is going to help you to be that explorer, help you to really look at the bigger picture. The energy of Gemini is going to help you look at the details so that you can figure out what are the stories in my life? Like what's working, what's not? And those stories are things that we tell ourselves. They may be true, they may be not, but we need to look at those and let go of what's not really working anymore. All right, we can't keep running those old stories. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's so easy to get caught in that. I know I do too sometimes, but we have to really sit with it, understand it, open up to it so that we can let go of it. All right, 2019, believe it or not, is coming to an end. What an intense year it's been for many people, including myself. It's been very intense, but we need to prepare and get ready for 2020 because we have so much to shift. So much is going on. We'll talk more and more about it as that opens up in another week or two. In fact, the next couple of weeks on the Empowered Spirit Show, I'll be doing readings about 2020, talking about the forecast coming in and closing the energy for this year as well. Really important that we do that. All right. So the biggest news again is really aligning with that idea of let me look at the stories in my life. Let me reflect on what's going on. Let me also gain the bigger picture and then feed that light body. Feed that energetic part of who you are. All right, activate those codes within yourself. This is sacred geometry. This is the light body. These are those unseen forces that we all live with. So really important as we do that. Now, there's another thing that happens as we move towards the end of the week. So like I said, there's so much going on this week. Important not to move too fast. I know it's hard. The holidays, so much to do. But finding the ability to slow down is really important. So as we move towards Friday and Saturday, we've got this energy. I had to write it down. It's so important. We've got this cosmic forces with Jupiter coming in. So really is the opportunity as you move to the end of the week to make some of those changes that you desire. All right. So notice. Here's the key. Notice what's happening on the full moon. Notice where you are with your energy. And then notice where it is you can shift. All right. Maybe it's a dream, maybe it's a seed of energy, maybe it's something that you really are working on. And as you move towards the end of the week, put those intentions out. Start to make a step to change that because there is a little bit of that energy of Jupiter. It's been through a lot of changing around, 
coming forward. It's a little cosmic force of energy that's really going to help you get ready for the year ahead. All right? Really big week. The best way to access the energy is to slow down, to take your time, and to be in that energy for yourself, and then see how you can open up and really start to reflect on the bigger picture for you as we end the year and begin another one. All right? Take a nice deep inhale. So much going on. Exhale away and just notice for a moment, where are you? Where are you feeling these energies for you? What do you need to do to reflect on the stories you've been telling yourself? And what do you need to do in order to open up to the bigger picture of your life, your purpose, your work, your happiness, your joy, your abundance? Those are the things that we're going to look at as we move through this week. Taking a nice deep inhale, let's just bring our energy together, center, so we can move into this week feeling more and more empowered. All right, if you can, just for a moment, close your eyes, take a nice deep inhale, exhale away, letting go of the week, letting go of any of the drama that may have occurred as this full moon builds, inhaling, and just bringing that breath all the way up the body, and exhale, bring it all the way down deep into the earth, feel that connection with Mother Earth, Inhaling and exhaling. Pulling in your energy, calling it in, pulling it in, all the many scattered parts. Let it all come right into the very center as you align with your spirit, align with that higher self. Inhaling and exhaling, feeling the energy centering. As we just take this moment, and offering gratitude for all your many blessings, good, better, and different, your experiences of life. This is how we learn. And just honoring yourself for all that you've been through for this year. Take another deep inhale. And opening up to your intention. Noticing where you are in this beautiful wheel of life. I talk about the medicine wheel. The medicine wheel helps us to see, to ground with Mother Earth. And we divide it into the directions, the directions of our lives, the directions of the, of the seasons. So here we are in the fall, the medicine wheel, we find ourselves in the direction of the west where the sun sets. We honor our work. And so we just take this time right now, just for a moment, feel the gratitude for your work, feel the gratitude for your intentions, embody that energy for you as you open it up. Marking the directions for guidance and protection to the west, the north, the east, and the south, above us, below us, right into the very center, opening up to those intentions for you from your heart, sending the energy out there, allowing that vibration to sustain you as you move through this week, inhaling and exhaling, <clears throat> bringing the awareness back. Coming back, opening the eyes. All right. Can y'all hear me? Hope so. <laughs> All right. We're going to look at the cards. Sin, is that better? Can you hear me now? All right, so the first card for all of us this week is the Four of Swords. So this card is a great card because it really matches in with that reflection of life. All right, reflect, take some time, reflect on what the year is for you, especially as this week with so much going on, fits into your week. Reflect on that energy for you, all right? Really, see how that third eye energy opens up. Don't let the mental chatter get there, but reflect on the life so that you can understand what's going on, all right? Really important. Four is that that balance, coming back into balance. Swords is that mental chatter. So make sure that you reflect on that energy for you. Look at the bigger picture, just like we were saying. And then you can also look at the individual details, all right? But slowing down, reflection, meditation is really the key for this, all right? Now, if you chose card number one, this is a great card too, because this is that fire energy coming forward. This is that new idea, that new passions and desires, especially as we end one season and move into the next, especially as we end one year and move into the next as well. 
So look at this. There is new growth. There is new passion, desire. Look at the red, the orange. That's opening that vibration up. So whatever those intentions are for you, let that newness begin. Plant those seeds, especially as we come to the end of the week, all right? The next card is the Nine of Cups, second card. This card is a great card. This is like gratitude. Things are working out. You've got a lot going on in your life. There is more to come. Nines always mean there's more to come. So really offering gratitude for all the many things going on and know that as you do this, you can build upon this through the abundance and prosperity in your life. But don't forget the gratitude, all right? Wish. It's a good wish card. And the third card is the two of wands. So this is showing us that it's building that energy that we just saw in the ace. So set those new things, really that Jupiter energy, especially at the end of the week, then let it point you in that direction that you need to go in. Look at the beautiful rainbows. Wands is our passions and our desires. A really great way to do that, all right? So as you go through the week, reflect on what you need. Look at the bigger picture as well as the details, but pull back, slow down, take your time, find that meditation time. As you do, new passions, new desires will come forward to magnify that energy out there for you. Offer gratitude, all right? Lots to reflect on, lots to be happy about this year. Maybe not everything was great. I know I had a rough year, but maybe not everything is, but we can always find something to be grateful for, and that energy can magnify for you as well, all right? And then the two of wands was that building of energy. As that newness comes forward, you can build it. You can grow it. You can find those rainbows, those passions and desires in your life. All right, really some good cards, all right? And again, the first one I love is because we do need to reflect. We need to slow down this week, all right? That we need to do. All right, so hopefully this will help you with some guidance for the week. It is a big week. I have lots going on. All right, one is on 12-12 over at Beacon Yoga, all right? We're gonna do a full moon circle. We're gonna talk more of what we talked about tonight, but we're gonna magnify the energy and join together. Come join us. Also, Saturday, if you want to feed your light body, if you want to know how to do that, come join us at Birmingham Yoga. We're going to be using some light, color, and sound and restorative poses. Definitely will feed the light body exactly what we're talking about. The following week is winter solstice. Jen Dunbar will be my guest. That'll be Wednesday at Birmingham Yoga, too. So much to join in. So if you can't find one, come to the other or come to all. All right? That's what we have going on. And then there will be a vision boarding in January, but we'll wait. There's so much going on now. All right. So some cards. I've had some requests. All right. Maris, Mayor, Sin. All right. Cindy, I hope you can hear me now. All right. So, Maris, I'm going to start with you. How much fun skiing? Okay. Here we go. It's a lover's card. That's all I'm going to say. Two of Cups is the true lover's card. All right, there it is. Keep your eyes open. That's all I'm going to say. In, in the tarot deck, the Two of Cups is really that lover's card. Because I know there's a lover major, but that's more of your soul and the love for yourself. So I'm going to say, Wing, that's all you need to know. All right, Mare, next for you. Ace of Pentacles. All right, we keep drawing this, I feel like, did we? Anyway, Ace of Pentacles is a new beginning. It's in the physical realm. It's with Mother Earth. It's money, abundance, work. So there is some newness coming in. A great way to start looking at that for you. Let me know how that resonates, all right? All right, Cindy, this card is for you. Cindy, Five of Wands. All right, so this is things are up in the air. And I know you feel like this. Know that that's okay. That's how we create change, all right? It does look like there's a lot of chaos, and maybe you feel that, but there are patterns. Notice the patterns. Especially as you go through this week, notice what's coming up. That's the energy for you to really look at, all right? Not a bad card. It is changed, though. All right. Ashley, how'd you like that card? How'd you like that class yesterday? Great Reiki 2 class. Always fun. All right. Let's see what card comes for. All right. Four of Wands. All right, this is a great card because four is balance, and it's saying, all right, things are coming together. Things are working. Go in deeper. Look at that blue in there. That's a, that, that intuitive energy that's like opening up. It's, it's the portals are opening. You see that? It's like the layers are opening for you. Really work at the energy this week of 12-12. This reminds me of that energy too. Passions, desires, things are opening up for you. Go in a little deeper. All right? All right. Got an awesome. Got a heart. All right. Let's see what else. Who else? Oh, good. Okay. Let's see. Ernest, I would love a card for romantic relationships at this time. All right. Kate, 
How are you? And Raylene, you too. All right. Let's see here. All right. Ernest. We got a seven of wands. All right, so this is a great card too. Sevens of spirituality. This is about shining your light, not being afraid to shine your light, even in the face of a little adversity. All right, so you may feel that those around you are like kind of questioning you as you open up and shine your light, but shine your light, all right? Don't be a victim to your circumstances. Open up through the passions of who you are and continue to shine. So with relationship interests, let's see. That's a good way to look at it too. Like really be who you are, all right? If you're looking for relationships, be really who you are, shine the light, and that is what you will attract, all right? All right, let's see. Raylene and then Kate. Raylene, here's the card for you. Four of Pentacles. All right, so this is a fun card. This is a card that really can kind of um, tell you that things are good. Things are lining up. Things are, in, you know, opposite each other, moving. It's like the wheels are turning. But the thing that we want to remember with the Four of Pentacles is not to hold on too tight. All right? Not to hold on to everything so tight that there is no movement. All right? So take a breath. Relax a little bit and let things begin to flow as you move through this week and let go of the excess energy as well. All right. All right. Kate, here we go. Here's a card for you. All right. Kate, this is a nine of wands. So this is a card that's building energy. Wands is our passions and desires. You're doing your work. You're building your skills. I remember now grad school. This is all good. It's all leading you to where you need to be. Check in with the moon energy. It's going to be a big moon this week. Check in with that, slow down, and pay attention to what it is that's coming in, all right? Shine your light. Yes, Ernest. All right, let me know how that fits for you. Hey, Thelma. All right, did I miss anybody? So this week on the Empowered Spirit Show, I got to interview James Twyman. He has been doing peace work for, gosh, since the 90s. I knew him in New York, all right? And his work is really amazing. He's taking the work of St. Francis on the road come January 2020, going from Portland, across the country to New York, bringing his show to Broadway and the work of St. Francis. Really interesting conversation, spirituality, religion, very interesting conversation. Check it out on the Empowered Spirit Show. All right, everybody, we have lots going on. The most important thing as you move through this week is to take some time, recognize that we're moving to this full moon, so you're going to feel the emotional body. If you're like me, you've already been feeling it. You may have some restless nights. That's okay. Take some deep breaths. Try to slow down. Try to find some time where you can really just sit and let all that excess energy go away. All right? We want to get rid of that. We want to reflect. We want to look at the bigger picture as well as some of the details so that we can reflect and move out. And then we can open up to this portal of energy and raise our vibration even greater. Once we clean out the old stuff, it's easier to raise a vibration. All right? Need help? Reach out. I do have some holiday specials. I'll put the link over here. Check it out. Some Akashic readings, some energy readings, and a winter renewal package as well. Get it for yourself or somebody else. Check it out. All right. Thanks again for joining me. Happy holidays. Be kind. Be gentle to yourself and to each other. Reach out if you need some help. I'm here. Through social media, you can find me or the podcast. Take a moment and reflect on your life as you move through this week. Big changes are coming. Stay with me as we move to the end of the year. Thanks again for joining me. This is your host, Terri Ann Hyman. To your spirit, namaste.